Hello, I'm Elizabeth Faconia and I'm here at the Yandina Community Gardens and what we try to specialise in is growing tropical vegetables. Why tropical vegetables you think? Well, you know we're here in this wonderful climate, subtropical climate, where we can grow not only our temperate vegetables in the winter, but our tropical vegetables in the summer. And that means that we can grow food all year round. Behind me here, I've got a cassava plant. That's this one here. Now cassava is not very well known amongst people generally, but when I say tapioca, well then people say, aha, they know those little white pearls that you can buy in a bag in the supermarket and they know that it makes a lovely tapioca pudding. Well, it's the tuber, the roots that we harvest of this plant and it's one of our starchy tubers. Tropical vegetables fall mainly into three categories. We have our leafy greens, beans and gourds and starchy tubers. And this cassava is just a wonderful example of one of our starchy tubers. All these starchy tubers can be used just like you would use potatoes. But they're starchy tubers and starchy tubers. So they do have different types of textures. Some are quite loose in textures, others are very dense. Another example of a starchy tuber is yam. Yam is grown all over the Pacific Islands, South America and even in Africa. We have an example here in the garden. Look, you can see a new leader coming out of the yam that we forgot to harvest. And all it does is draw this great big leader and new leaves will grow from all these little axles here. Now just behind me here, I found the yam. It hasn't got any new growth yet, it's still got the old growth here. And I'm going to take it out of the ground, have a look. Look at that, it's just loose in the ground and so easy to harvest. It kind of just pops itself out of the ground. It's a very knobbly looking specimen and I do believe it's one of our native varieties. It's very ugly to look at, but on cooking it, and using it, I found it to be a very, very lovely texture, very easy and, and delicious to eat. I've got another example of a yam right here beside me. Look at this. This is one that I harvested a couple of months ago from my place. And look, it has a, a new leader coming onto it as well. Now, this to me says it's October in the Southern Hemisphere in our subtropical climate. Because that's what these yams do. They want to grow at this time of the year. I've got to next propagate it and cut it off here, plant this in the ground, and then I can eat the rest of this yam for dinner. Well, a few dinners perhaps. What I'd like to do with it is to cook it up like potato, but instead of water, I'll cook it up in coconut cream. It's just so delicious, the two combined together. Can't wait. Ah, look what I found in the garden now. One of our tropical greens. Have a look at this. This is Ibica. It's also called Pacific Island Greens. Now these leaves have been overwintering and although it's spring, we haven't had those spring rains yet, but once the soil gets the moisture in it, these leaves are going to be so lush and succulent. Very much favoured by the Pacific Island people. And their favourite way of cooking it is chop them up coarsely, put them in a pot with some coconut cream and a dash of lime juice. Wow, I'm getting hungry just thinking of all this food, aren't you? Well, I'm in our nursery here at the community gardens and this is a great place to be at this time of the year because it's the beginning of the growing season and by the growing season I mean that lovely hot summer that's waiting for us. These tropical plants love that summer heat. So we get busy at this time of the year and get all these plants in their pots ready to go in the garden, either our gardens or other people's gardens. I've got an example here of the Ibica I showed you in the garden before. Now this is lush, young, new growth. Look at that. These leaves are already saying, eat me, eat me. And they're delicious. They just slide down the throat. It's a cocoa yam, and that's one of our starchy tubers. It belongs to the taro family. It's very, very water-wise, although it doesn't mind being waterlogged for some time either. 
very, very easy to grow. And the little corms that are at the bottom of that plant are absolutely delicious to eat. What do they taste like? They taste like a nutty kind of waxy type of potato. And when I think about that, I can just imagine myself having some cooked cocoa yam, sliced and fried in some hot ghee. Yum. What have I got here? Now, everyone knows what this tropical vegetable is about. Do you recognize it? It's sweet potato. That's what the sweet potato foliage looks like. Now, when it grows, it doesn't take long to become a rambling vine. And not only do we get those delicious sweet potatoes from it, but you can also eat the leaves, especially the tips, and make a delicious cooked salad. You can just take the tips, chop them up coarsely, and steam them until they're just tender, then chop up an onion very fine, a good dash of fish sauce, and a squeeze of lime juice, and voila, you've got a cooked salad at your fingertips. And this delicate looking plant here is one of our land crest types and it doesn't need to sit in water to grow well but it does need even soil moisture and it likes an understory situation it doesn't like to be baked hot and dry under that summer sun but loves the hot weather just in a dappled sunlight situation now this is only very young but the leaves that will grow quite long and they're great salad greens for your summer salad. Here's another one, Salon spinach. You're probably familiar with Salon spinach. I think a fair few people have that growing in their yard still. Uh, it's quite versatile how this one will grow. It does like a little bit of a shady situation and some soil moisture and it'll just go rampant. We have them growing here at the gardens on fan trellises made from bamboo and you can't even see the bamboo it's just so well covered with salon spinach it's a great addition for your cooked spinach and for your quiche dishes well just look at all the different varieties of tropical vegetables that we have and it's all very well knowing what they look like and even what they taste like but how do we grow them when do we plant them when can we harvest them so many questions well i mentioned before we're at a certain time of year and it's october the rains haven't arrived yet but they won't be far away and it's just this time of the year that all these plants just want to grow and i'll tell you what they don't like being in these little pots either they're just waiting to jump out into the garden and a really great way to plant these tropical vegetables is in a no dig garden a no-dig garden can be turned into a food forest garden in no time at all. It might take you 18 months to two years of tending that type of garden, but after that, it's easy peasy and it's cruising most of the time because these plants, once they're established, will largely look after themselves. Well, just look at all these gorgeous tropical vegetables. They're here for us to plant in our gardens and to enjoy them. I hope I've inspired you with this little segment and just don't be afraid to try them out because I'm sure you'll love the taste.